Roswell Flight Test Crew back at Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, Georgia, and I'm talking to Sasha Mela over at the Venture Aerospace booth. How are you doing, Sasha? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. You've got this, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. You've got this amazing flying machine behind us. What's it for? How does it work? What does it do? Yes, so this is our first drone that we're bringing out to market. This is our tethered version. It is 16 foot wingtip to wingtip. And the first version will be connected to our rover. Our rover is gonna carry all the batteries. Um, and then after this, we're gonna move on to our diesel engine. With the diesel is fuel agnostic, it will be untethered, free flying, and hopefully our hope is that we'll make this production process very simple so it's easily scalable. Everybody across the world will be able to do it and implement it in farming. Farming, so what is, what is this impressive aircraft gonna do? Under the aircraft, there's a small pod and that pod is open source. So every company, every client will be able to make their own version of what they want the drone to do. Mapping versus adding nozzles and um, we actually will have some um, machine learning technologies on the underside to help farmers identify which plant is diseased, why it's diseased, and the drone will be autonomous enough that the farmer will be connected to an app that will allow them to click on their land that's fully mapped and tell the drone to go spray a particular plant or find a particular problem. Got it. I was going to say, this is a pretty big aircraft just for mapping, so I imagine agriculture application is your main market. Yes, and it, the, for the tethered version, we have gotten a lot of interest from construction companies because we've been able to lift about 350 pounds with this version, and the diesel will be 500 pounds minimum. And that will be a fuel and fertilizer materials trade-off. Wow, that's, that's just crazy impressive. Now, what is this aircraft made of? The material is kind of unusual. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it before. Mm -hmm. So the one you see behind me is actually our model for our aircraft. We had to... We can make this ourselves in our in our labs. This is our mold, our, our initial mold. So once we have proven, which we have, we've proven that this has flown and this are, is our shape, we're going to move to our true material. This is our proprietary polyurethane foam mixture with layers of carbon glass and epoxy and resin on the outside. And this is all pressurized. So it kind of cures in the same way that tempered glass cures. And it's very easy to make. Cure time is about seven, eight hours. You can make hundreds. Wow, hundreds and it's it's very lightweight too. I mean, I'm surprised how much it doesn't weigh. Yes, and we have actually taken it down to a shooting range. Wait a minute, a shooting range? Yes, well, it was COVID, so we couldn't take it to a true aerospace bullet facility, so we took it down to our local shooting range, and we had um, them shoot AK-47s and large bullet weapons at it. And what we learned was it imparts no energy into this. So the bullet goes straight through and this does not move. So if our aircraft is flying and being shot at, no one will be able to drop it. Do you, do you anticipate your crop duster being shot at a lot? Yes, well, crop dusters are shot at every single year. About 1% dies in crashes and many are just shot at and their planes are brought down um, by their neighbors, by anybody. They, it's a thing where if you're in a crop duster, it's very really hard to have a turn, so you can't like bank properly back. So if you go above somebody else's land and you have um, something like Monsanto and they don't, then they get really angry and they shoot at you. Wow. Okay. Well, newsflash there, everybody. So you've got these two giant propellers for, um, for lift, I take it. And in the back, you've got four equally sized motors. What are those for? Those are for our pitch, yaw, controlling surfaces. But... Um, we will not be using that in the diesel version. You, when we move to the diesel version, we're, we're going to take out all of our blades, all of our props, and we're, yes, we're going to have this 3D printed in canal combustion chamber. So this is basically the most important thing for our diesel engine. This allows us to have distributed architecture in our aircraft. So we're not going to have a turbine. The next version of our aircraft, we're going to place this inside the body of the aircraft, and then fr thrust will be ejected through the exhaust and it will be split up into two different directions, onto two sides, the two wings. And instead of having any blades, we're gonna have a circular sort of duct to direct the air down, and that will be on a gimbal, so you can have VTOL, and then you can rotate them horizontally. So on top of that, there's no need for a generator or to turn the, the power coming off your power plant into electricity to turn propellers. Yes, exactly. Um, we can also use this for power generation on the ground. It's fully fuel agnostic. You can put biodiesel in it. You can put kerosene. You can put anything. 
Very impressive. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's its amazing. I mean, they will, we'll walk around this thing, but it's incredible. Well, Sasha, thank you so much for sharing this remarkable project with you, and best of luck to you as you continue work on it. It's really something. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to meet you. <laughs> All right, and from Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, Georgia, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Crew signing off. Thanks again. Thank you.